What's going on guys and welcome back. Happy weekend for those of you who are watching this over the weekend as this is uploaded. Today we're gonna be looking at something a lot of you have been asking me about, my top five favorite decks. Now my top five will change and vary throughout the years. Uh, you asked me this question in six months and my list might be completely different. For now, right now, I will give you basically my favorite cards that I like to carry around, uh, the ones that I use the most. Some are still available, some are not. Uh, don't get upset, I'm sure you can find them on eBay or something. Somewhere, but that just goes to show you if you love a deck of playing cards and you see it on the market man snag up a brick if you can because the value will severely increase you'll find them sitting on eBay a couple months later for literally 10 times the price I mean playing cards are a great investment nowadays every successful Kickstarter that's ever been funded I mean the value of the cards have increased exponentially. By the way, I'm not going to include any of my decks. I think that's a little biased. We're gonna look at the decks that I like the ones that aren't mine, okay? Because there also be like, you know, wouldn't be fair. So we're gonna look at the top five favorite decks that aren't mine, but that I do carry around that I do use. So let's get into that right now. Number five, we are looking at the Monarchs by Theory 11. These are the blue Monarchs. They're not the red ones or the green ones. These cards were also featured in Now You See Me. They were featured in the movies uh, one and two. We've got this beautiful embossing all around with this gold sort of soft gold foil. And the material that this is made of, the, the tuck case is like, I don't know how to quite say it, but it's not matte, but there's like kind of like this little velvety feel to it almost. Funny story, I actually have, so under the seal, there's like a skull with two swords. I actually have that tattoo on my body. I love everything about this deck, honestly. I think it's, a, I think it's one of the classiest decks in, uh, in recent history. Whatever that means. But yeah, no, it looks good. This looks like a deck that you would carry around at like a very high-end sort of classy gig, and which I do. The back design is really neat. It's very simple. You got that line art going all the way through with that beautiful snake and, and the knife. The jokers are identical, which I really appreciate as well. The ace is iconic. This is, for me, a really perfect deck. It's just like a whole package. When you get this, you're very, very happy about the tuck case, the cards themselves, the feel, the stock. It's just a very cool deck to have in your collection. So those were the Blue Monarchs. Number four, Gold Kings. The Gold Kings, or the Kings, I think they're just the Kings, basically. This, uh, when I first saw this, I was blown away, no pun intended, because the trailer for this was like super over the top. It was Daniel, uh, Daniel Madison and Pete McKinnon literally like robbing a bank and then like driving into the desert and exploding a van. It was one of the most over the top car trailers, but I think that was the point. They're like, you know what? Hell with it. Let's go like hard over the top. All these other people are using dub steps and 3D lettering. Let's just blow up a van and rob a bank and not even show them the playing cards. That was genius. They literally did a whole trailer where you never saw the cards and these things I think sold out overnight. Love that. I love that. I love it so ballsy. It's something you don't see often enough. And they had this duffel bag filled with these gold decks in it. It looked like just, just like a pile of gold. I've never seen like a complete gold tuck case like this with only the, the knife and the, uh, or the sword and the ax from the two kings and then like the embossing of the address on the bottom. But just this, just having this feels like I'm holding like a gold bar. Like I'm holding like a 24 karat you know, like I raided Fort Knox and I just, mm. Here's a little funny story. Uh, when these came out, my buddy Pete McKinnon had a whole bunch. I was not working at Illusionist yet. And I hit up Pete and I was like, yo, I want some of those cards. I was going down to Toronto and he's like, oh, I got some extra bricks or whatever. Just come swing by. So I went down to Toronto and uh, I was there on some business and I took like a couple hours out of my day to drive down to where Pete lives to meet him and then he hooked me up with these two. It, it seemed like some like illegal drug deal was going down you know in a parking lot of a Tim Hortons. So kind of kind of funny that like the whole trailer was like robbing a bank and then he's like handing me two bricks of these gold bricks. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. This is the back design. Oh, I love the back design. And a lot of people dog this deck. A lot of people are like, oh no, they're my least favorite. I'm like in love with these cards. I don't care what anyone says. I love that pattern. It looks kind of like a Louis Vuitton, sort of Burberry, high-end, simplistic design. No borders. They are marked. Listen, I don't even know how they're marked, but they're marked. If you guys can figure it out, good for you. Oh, good for you. But they also come in stack, which is dope. Okay, the Jokers are not identical, which I'm not a big fan of, but open two decks, swap out the Jokers, all of a sudden you have identical Jokers, right? Here's also a cool thing. Okay, you got a double backer, whatever. Uh, here's like the world's coolest gaff. This is, I think, Daniel's idea. 
So sick, such a good idea. You got seven of hearts here, look at the back of this. Look at that, is that seven of hearts corner? So the routine basically is, you, you say to the spectator, okay, I'm gonna rip this, right? And you actually rip it, and you pretend to put it on the back, you're actually like throwing it in your palm, and then you have them hold it, right? And people hold that, because it looks real, it looks like, and they're like, okay. And then what Daniel does, he just walks away. And they're left there with their, they're like, what? And then, huh? Oh my God, it's in the car! So a really cool thing you can leave with your spectators, this is one of the most incredible gaff cards uh, that have been created. One of the most original gaff cards, I think, lately there's, you know, we see a lot of the old gaff cards coming around. This is just a great idea. So, love this deck, love it to bits. It actually lasts you a long time. Like the feel and stock are very, very good. Not enough to say about this, you know, link below. Number three, Red Wheels Playing Cards by Dan and Dave. This was a DKNG Studios, which is a graphic design. I wanna say graphic design studio. I love this, first of all, I love this top case. The matte red against the white embossed um, gold seal right here, just really, really pretty. It's got that little skull on it. The reason I love this deck so much is because it's a really, it's a modern take, a sort of eclectic, abstract take on traditional design. So on the back you have uh, these this sort of bike design where it's like a bike inverted um, and then these skulls here which are so pretty and then um, you have like all the pips in the corner so it is a one-way design which is pretty cool. You know not something you would normally use but if you want to use a one-way design quick simple way to use that is keep the deck in in the orientation that it's in and have them take a card, flip your deck around, have them put the card back in. Now all you're looking for is the irregular card, right? Because you got hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades, right? So if you flip it, you'll know which side it's on. So it's a little bit of a trick for you guys if you want to use that. There's a one-way back design. So, so many things I love about this deck. First of all, the feel. It's a very thin stock. It's a crushed stock, which I really like because Feels like you're holding air, you know what I mean? And it really makes it easy to like break it in. It already feels broken in if I, you can kind of hear like it's not giving me any resistance. You got two identical jokers, well almost identical. It's a metallic ink, one of them is a little bit darker than the other, but honestly if I use them as a duplicate, no one's gonna know the difference. What I really love about this is, are the pips. And some people hate these, oh my God, I love these so much. Contrasting color where you have that golden metallic ink. The design to me looks like a very Danish inspired design. Something you would find in like mid-century modern magazines. Funny because two Danish kids actually did the, uh, are they Danish or Belgian? Tobias and Oliver, two of the best cardists in the world. Two, two guys that I look up to in cardistry and I think everybody should. They're, they're like literally extreme practitioners and perfectionists. And their aesthetics and their flourishes and their and their cuts are just beautiful at base. They're very, very good at what they do. They did the trailer for this, which I really like because it kind of had that Danish feel already with the deck design. And I don't know if that was intentional to be like, oh, this feels Danish. Let's give it to some Danish kids and have them, you know. I just thought all of that was just on point. Great feel, red wheels. High heels. Number two, we are going to look at the Cherry Casino playing cards. Now a lot of you have seen these in my videos recently. I love the Cherry Casino playing cards. These are designed in part by Frankie Morales. So many things I love about this deck. First of all, it feels and looks like a standard deck of cards you would find in a casino, right? Cherry Casino, not a real casino, but it look, look at this, Cherry Casino. Very simplistic, this sort of Coca-Cola sort of line going through the top. I love the color as well, that same color as my ring here. Cards themselves, once again, duplicate joker, win. Ace is, looks like a casino ace, and the rest are completely standard, which is also really cool. So this is something I do perform with, and this is something I love just carrying for like cardistry and stuff. It looks so cool, but the best thing about these cards, the very best thing, okay, small story, when I was back at Murphy's working with them, they had these in stock. I think there was four bricks left and I picked up all four. I was like, I know these cards are gonna sell out. They're not reprinting. I'm gonna grab these now. I'm down to, eight decks out of four bricks. Just to tell you how many how many of these decks I used, I know. I probably should take better care of my cards. And a lot of you guys are asking what I do with the cards when I'm done with them. Uh, for the most part, I keep them and then I'll do like a giveaway and I'll give them away. And I've done that a few times actually. I've literally sent hundreds of decks of cards to people all over the world. So stop asking for giveaways. The shit will happen when it happens when I'm, but thanks for asking. The best thing about these cards is as soon as you take them out of the box, I haven't even done this yet, watch this. Oh, 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 are you kidding me? They feel so good. 
It's like that perfect mix between soft and hard and oh, these like literally, oh, oh man. I'll carry these in my pocket without even a deck, without even a, a tuck case. Break them out, boom, they feel good again. You know what I mean? I love that kind of feel. And it's so rare because I think when creating decks of cards, you don't actually control any of those factors. You can try, but it's all in the hands of USPC. Sometimes you just get screwed and sometimes you get lucky. And on one run, you just get like the best feeling looking deck ever. And this is right up there. This is literally, mm, I wish they made more of these. They made a V2, a little bit darker back. Not, it's not this, right? Um, I mean, it was clever. They, they, they crushed it and you can't top this. For me, this is the Jerry's Nuggets of playing cards. If you want a deck, you know, that doesn't exist anymore, to be honest, these right here. Oh, so good. And number one, the number one deck, my number one favorite deck at the moment, you guys probably already guessed it. White Lions, Series B, Black. These babies are everything to me. I perform with them, I sleep with them, cuddle them, cradle them, hold them to my face gently, softly caress my cheek with the exotic embossing foliage, the beautiful tuck case. I just recently looked at the Red White Lion Series B um, on the Blaine versus Chris Angel video. So I'm not gonna go to, it's the same thing except they're black. I just love these cards so much. Again, they come in stack, they last forever. So that is my number one favorite deck. Uh, if you guys wanna check out a review of this deck a little more in depth, check out the previous video with the Chris Angel versus David Blaine. I'll leave the link at the end of the video where you can watch that, but this is my number one favorite day. All right, guys, that is my top five favorite decks. I hope you guys like that, and I hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave a couple links below where you can search these decks if they exist, or maybe the V2s in the Cherry Casino case. Grab them if you like. I highly recommend all of these decks, and I think they're all great. Let me know below which one of these five you actually like, or if you've used any of these, which ones do you like, or do you agree or disagree with what I have to say? And if you disagree, then give me your top five. Let me know what your top five is below. And if I have those cards laying around, maybe I'll do some type of deck review in the future. This has been fun. I like this little top five video, little clickbait for you. Huh? Got him with the clickbait. <laughs> So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you like this video. It helps me out so much. Let me know, like I said, what your favorite deck is below and what your top five might be or if you agree or disagree with my top five. Guys, as always, it's always fun putting up videos and seeing the feedback that I get. So I really, really appreciate it. I read the comments and I respond to a lot of them. Um, I wanna respond to more. When I have time, I usually do. So especially within like the first hour. If I've just uploaded a video, chances are in the first hour, I'm gonna read like every comment and just like respond to a lot of them. So if you wanna hit me up like with questions and stuff, that's the time to do it, just letting you know. There you have it guys, thanks so much. Stay tuned for the next video dropping very soon and I'll see you on the next one, all right? Peace.